first Sunday of October, the time when we, many Christians, observe World Communion Sunday. Few scripture could be more appropriate for this day than this parable of the harvest. It is set in a vineyard, a common image for the kingdom of God. It concerns the state of affairs in the commonwealth of God. On this day, diverse groups within God's family lean forward to hear a story of peculiar relevance from Jesus. Jesus' work with material that was familiar to his listeners. He used words and images from Isaiah, Song of the Vineyards. That's in Isaiah chapter 5, 1 to 7. As in Isaiah, the landlord painstakingly established a vineyard. A vineyard in Isaiah, well, it yielded wild grapes rather than grapes, which means the vineyard was ruined. The vineyard that produced an adequate crop by the tenants refused to return the produce to the owner. Both stories present injustice that cries for a remedy. The parable of the landowner affords us a glimpse of the character of God, while the tenants represent us. Uh oh, that's all of us. God has created a wonderful world in which each of us, each of us has a place, an opportunity to be prospective and you know, produce and have a good life. But God has attended that every detail for the creation for us. Take care of everything. In this vineyard, we have every reason to rejoice in the blessing that our Creator has bestowed on us and share the riches with others and with God. No other arrangement seems fair. Oh, well, but unfortunately, our story, like the story here, well, packs a rude surprise. We present-day tenants want to keep all of the produce. In fact, we, too, want to install, be installed as the owner. We justify it by our thoughts. Hear what we are thinking. We have toiled the soil, tended the crop, kept watch over it night and day. Without us, there would be no crop. Why should the owner get any of the crop, let alone the lion's share of it? We, like the original tenant, contemplate the distance between the owner and ourselves. We reason, why should we pay him? He too far, he too far away to touch us from a distance. We may, he may never come back. Wow, he has many other vineyards. We need the produce more than he does. You see, the tenants in the parable are traditionally called wicked. More than for their violence than their greed. We find in Matthew chapter 11, verse 12, Jesus has already said, from the day of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven has suffered violence, and the violent takes it by force. 
from the time of Cain and Abel. We humans have, well, shown an astonishing capability for violence. Let no one, not even God, stand in our way. The most amazing feature of this parable is the forbearance of the landowner. He ends up with no rent, no honor, no servant, no son, and no vineyard. This is an odd depiction of our Creator God, who has a strange vulnerability to us creation. God comes. To us in such a way that we can almost always turn God down. Frederick Burkhar observed that God puts himself at our mercy, not only in the sense of suffering that we can cause him by our blindness and cruelty, but the suffering that we can cause him simply by suffering ourselves. When someone we love suffers, we suffer with them because the suffering and the love are one. Because God's unsurpassable love for us, there seems to be no limit to the self-humiliation to which the divine will be said in pursuing us. That is the nature of love. Did they get that? How far our Creator will go and pursue us because He loves us. God is 
is the only one most able to distribute the bounty or the blessing for all. If you think, hey, I got God's blessing protected you, then you don't have a blessing. Blessings could be for everyone. And that's called loving everyone, because that's the blessing. Being generous enough in your heart to have an open heart. No matter what somebody says, you listen. And you hear, and that's how we grow. By being generous and kind of heart. Yeah, our Creator provides everything for us. We'll go to no limits. We'll pursue you to where you are at. Why? For the greatest blessing of all. He loves you.